think uh, you got to be prepared to do it tomorrow. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, we, I mean, it was a great battle to watch. This is a lot of games in March are. Um, and I think definitely for us watching that game, it was, um, I, I think, not, a, not necessarily a wake-up call, but like, uh, okay, this is March. Because at any time, anybody can come out on top. So um, I think obviously with the, we're not going to say too much on the scout and the film and whatnot, but they have some great players that we have to be ready for um, coming into tomorrow. So I think we're just getting ready for that. And for me, this is a rematch. So I'm, I'm ready for tomorrow. But yeah, it's, they're a great team, and we just got to bring our A game. And I'll just add, like, I think what's so great about the Pac-12 is there's so many different styles of play, so I think that has allowed us to be ready for sort of anything. And like Katie said, it's March. Like, any team that's in the still in it is obviously going to be a tough team to beat. Um, but, yeah, we're ready. I think at th this time it's more focusing on us and how we can be um, excellent as opposed to, like, obviously taking care of the scout. But we're going to do our best to, to get our get back for KD. <laughs> Katie, just to go off that, what, what's the, you know, what's your – personal mentality with that you mentioned the rematch going into tomorrow oh I don't I don't say there's too much going into it. it's just it's another game for me I I'm just trying to treat it just like any of our Pac-12 tournament games were um and we all uh coach Lindsay always says we got to win the weekend and so for us this is the um second part of that Kayla you mentioned what <laughs> you mentioned Lindsay's experience in the NBA um like what's it been like do you kind of pick up things that she learned specifically in the NBA? Like, how do you um, identify some of those things? Like, oh, like this is something you picked up from the NBA. This is something they they run in that league. Do you watch NBA games? You're like, oh, we do that. Yeah, I mean, I remember like very vividly at in the summer when we didn't have much film to watch yet. We were watching film of like NBA and WNBA teams, and those are kind of sets that we now use to play in. Um, but I think just like sort of the whole operation of how we work as a team is very pro-like. I think she tries to mimic that as obviously a lot of players are trying to get to that level. Um, so yeah, I think just the way she treats everything is very reminiscent of like her experiences with the Cavs and so on. Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Um, Katie, you mentioned this, that like you guys always talk about winning the weekend and how I think every Pac-12 coach is like, we love that our schedule prepares us for the NCAA tournament. But you guys come from a league where you play back to back every weekend in the Ivy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, has this been like an easier schedule for you? Like, <laughs> kind of. As we get older, nothing gets easier. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say to that. Yeah, I mean, it's prepared us mentally, I guess, for having to play back to back, um, especially with scouts. But the, I mean, your body is your body. Like, so playing these games. Two in a weekend is always it's always tough, but it's tough for them too. Everybody's playing these weekends, so um, yeah, it's good that we got the experience. But you know, like like I said, everybody's playing this weekend, or whoever's left. Front, and then we might have time for one more question. Kayla talked to you about this a little bit yesterday, but there were a lot of 45 jerseys here yesterday, and particularly just from you know Filipino community in, in Los Angeles and. You've seen that steadily grow over the course of this mm -hmm. year, and just what what has that meant to kind of continue to see that that representation and just the, the the love that you've inspired from from that community here? Yeah, no, it means a lot. Um, I like to say this is not on only an experience for our team or individually, but it's an experience for everyone. Um, I saw a post a few days ago that there are like maybe eight or nine Asian Americans who are starting on. Uh, their rosters for March Madness, which is, uh, I mean, it's a very staggering number just of how like, little representation there is. But um, it means a lot because, again, this is the biggest stage of college basketball. So if regardless if, you know, there's a, a young you know, Asian-American hooper who's just seeing this for the first time being here at Galen, it's, it's awesome to even think that I could be a role model or, you know, a sense of representation for people who want to one day be at the stage. Last question. Thank you. Uh, Coach Lindsay's really praised your guys' fitness, is, and it's really shown up late in the season. Um, when you think back to the summer and, like, what Coach D had you doing, what was, like, the hardest thing that she had you guys doing to prepare you now? <laughs> yeah, I will say. You can talk about the 22s. Oh, okay. Yeah. 22s, probably, the last round. 
you work your way up to how many meters? 20, 22. So it's like two up and backs yeah. in 22 seconds, but it almost killed us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we did do the Santa Monica stairs in the oh summer, yeah. which were intense. But yeah, no, I, we credit her for so. I think, you know, you just. You don't really necessarily s instantly see those results, but as you get later, you know, in these games, you recognize like, wow, maybe if I hadn't done those 22s, I wouldn't be standing right now. But yeah, yeah so shout out to Coach D. Yeah, shout out Coach D. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs>
that's like a quote. Put it on a plaque. Yes, for sure. Me too. <laughs> Welcome to the NCAA March Madness second round pre-game press conference. Please take this time to silence your cell phones and remember no flash photography is permitted. We would also like to remind you that no outside recording or distribution is permitted by the NCAA for this event. We are joined by University of Southern California head coach Lindsay Gottlieb. We ask that you please only ask a question when you have the microphone in your hand and that you state your name and publication with each new question. <clears throat> if you've joined us through Zoom, please raise your hand and remember to state your name and publication when called on. Thank you, and we'll start with an opening statement from Coach. Um, hey, everyone. We'll just get this out of the way. I know I'm exponentially more boring without the little ones today, uh, but hopefully this goes a little more smoothly. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. So grateful to still be playing. Um, uh, Last night was exciting. Um, it was really fun in this building, but I think our job today is to turn the page, get locked in, and have a good practice in preparation for a really good Kansas team who comes into this tournament as hot as almost anybody um, down the stretch of the season. Um, uh, they pose a lot of uh, issues for other teams. They're really good, um, and so we have our work to cut out to get ready um, and, and have a big game on Monday night um, playing to get to the Sweet 16. Your win with the LA Times, Lindsay. What stands out to you about the way Kansas plays, especially uh, yes, yesterday, whatever day that was? Um, <laughs> they they did um, stage a big comeback in the fourth to end end up winning that game. Yeah, um, I mean they're incredibly capable. There's there's not a lot of flaws. They have terrific post play. Um, they have explosive guards. They have shooting. Um, and obviously, as we saw yesterday, um, they can kind of turn it on and go on a run, which they did at the most critical point of the season. So um, they're, they're just really impressive. Um, they're athletic. Um, they also run good stuff. And uh, I think they know who they are. They're, they're a veteran team uh, who won the NIT last year. Um, so while they might be new to this particular stage, they're not new, I think, uh, to each other. Um, yeah, they're really dynamic. Lisa Evans with the Orange County Register. Lindsay, it, it feels like at so many moments this year, McKenzie has been kind of like an emotional barometer for you guys just in terms of big shots, leadership, you know, this and that, getting the crowd going. And it, it feels like she is sort of a unique confidence, obviously comes from a, a long background in, in playing history. Just w where do you see that kind of show up with her day in and day out and, and how much – of that confidence, do you, do you just see as present is in key to this team? Yeah, I mean she's a um, she's a natural leader. I think she's been our most vocal and kind of our our on court leader from day one. That's not new. Uh, I think her confidence comes from a work ethic and a skill set. Um, she puts the work in. Um, there's there's a lot of elements to her game. She's just she's got a lot of game, and um, I think she's really settled in here to. Um, to her role, and, and I think we've all gotten better at like playing off of one another. And I think um, you're just you're seeing her, you know, her IQ and her skill set and the team chemistry kind of on display. Um, we obviously are better when when she makes shots, but she also um, you know directs a lot of things um, when she's not necessarily you know the scorer or the secondary scorer at that time. How much did Kenzie's game change from when you were with her as a uh, freshman at Cal, she goes to Harvard, plays in a different system, plays for a while, and then you get her again as a grad transfer. Just how much did her game mature through that journey? Um, I think that that I mean her body really changed. I remember even in the year that um, she sort of wasn't in college basketball when she was trying to get whatever necessary things to to go to Harvard. Like she, I mean, I stayed in touch with her. She was training with her brother. She was training with a trainer, and all of a sudden, I'm seeing videos and I'm like her body had completely shifted she's always had a skill set I mean I remember watching her in high school um you know and you just you see she's not necessarily blowing by anyone but she's got every tool in her bag and that's very rare right like it's really rare as a um you know a young a high school player and certainly as a young college player and and when I had her as a freshman I think she was our sixth man uh, on an NCAA tournament team um she always knew where the ball was supposed to go uh, she always knew kind of what we were trying to accomplish. She would make big shots, but she's grown in, I think, her, like I said, her being being in shape and her command and her confidence um, in her skill set. But it's just a kind of 
an increased version, uh, a 20-something year old version of her, not the 18 year old version, but I don't think she wildly changed it. Just she continued to get better, which is what you're supposed to do. Um, and now she's, you know, getting ready to be at a, a pro and she's capable. I mean, I've talked to a number of WNBA people. Like, I think she's, you know, going to be drafted, should be drafted, um, but we obviously have more work to do here. And I think she's uniquely suited to help us accomplish the goals that we're trying to accomplish. Lindsay, yesterday, or, you know, you, you had a little bit of that lull in, in the second quarter and then you, subbed in Kayla Williams, she immediately started pressing the ball. You know, you, you went to that press a lot, and it felt like just kind of the, the defensive tone of the game shifted a little bit. You've seen that a lot from her. And in, in the, How much do you trust her with that, those responsibilities, of just picking up full court, that she's going to guard, you know, opposing point guard, she's going to put pressure, and, and how much of an impact does that have? I think she's, you know, this last month or two has really grown into and completely, like, you know, accepted and owned a really important role for us. She's a she's a complete and utter tempo changer. I mean, to be able to have the luxury of having someone who's that impactful, particularly on the defensive end, come in and shift the game is huge for us. She also has like obviously a different cadence on the offensive end too. Um, so, you know, as we've continued to improve, it has been, you know, the the focus of let's say our first five really having a chemistry together, but also getting key contribution contributions off the bench. And I think Kayla plays her role incredibly the wo well, I, the way that Clarice does in a, in a different aspect. And I think you you need that down the stretch. And, and I mean, Kayla's been huge for us. I actually just said it in the locker room when I was talking about some other stuff, but I thought she, you know, she came in and impacted the game all the way going back to the Cal game, you know, and um, at Arizona, um, certainly Stanford. Like there's just different times when you, you know that, you know, we aren't the team that we are without her, you know, whatever minutes it is off the bench. Seeing a lot of talk about growing the game, especially in this market, it's so hard to break through in this market. Having USC and UCLA both host regionals on same day tomorrow, you guys are going to play essentially at the same time. Like, do you feel like that's kind of a I don't I don't know if it's a missed opportunity, but just yeah. like well, now some people yeah. have got to choose a little bit. Yeah, I mean, not not my decision, obviously. Um, I have nothing to do with that. To me, there's got to be reasonings. I I know that they made a shift to try and get the number one overall seed, who is South Carolina to make sure they have the most rest heading into a potential Final Four. So maybe something has to do with when people have to play their other regional. I really don't know. Um, you know, it's, a, it's certainly a bummer for people in Southern California who would want to go watch both games, right? I think there were some diehards who saw us at 1.30 and went to see UCLA at 6 or whenever, 6.30, whenever they played. And I don't think you can do that with 5.30 and 7. Um, and certainly if they were on two different days. But I, I really have no idea how those decisions are made. Um, and I also think there's enough, I mean, our place was packed yesterday. That was incredible. I didn't I get a chance to look at, you know, the totality of UCLA's crowd, but I do think there's enough energy and excitement around here to, you know, have people show up for both. But yeah, I think in a perfect world, we would all want to either be on different days or to be, you know, scheduled with enough time in between that people could see both. I'm Adi Kali, uscfootball.com. Uh, I asked, uh, you know, a few of the players, you know, kind of what you bring to this program. Um, and one other thing was kind of a culture change and whatnot. Uh, what are some of the things that motivate you to, you know, change the culture here and, you know, kind of show up uh, all the time for these players and bring USC to this point uh, where, you know, a number one seed and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, when I was – had the opportunity to, to consider taking this job, um, I think my mindset was – what a humbling opportunity um, to be at essentially maybe the greatest brand in college sports and a great history in women's basketball and have the opportunity to revive it. So my motivation every day is to to do right by that and to try and you know reach for the moon and the stars with that and achieve everything relative you know to, to women's basketball and represent this university in that way. Like what a great, incredible, humbling opportunity that I try to live up to that every day for you know, the incredible alumni that, that we have and represent them for the people, you know, President Fultz who believed in me and, 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 you know, both Mike Bone and now Jen Cohen and the leadership that believed in me. And then on a day to day basis, when you're not trying for, let's say, the moon shot every single moment, you're just trying to, you know, impact the lives of these 18. I used to say 18 to 22. Now it's like 18 to 25 year olds. Um, uh, but trying to make sure that their experience in college basketball on a day in and day out basis is as great as it can be. Um, and you do that with small moments every single day that hopefully ultimately lead to, um, you know, these big things.
you mentioned yesterday, like your experience in the NBA and how uh, that just opened your mind a little bit. How does having players like Juju, having players like Kenzie come into this program change what you're able to do on offense? Because this team looks a lot different than the NCAA tournament team that went, y that sure. went to the tournament last year. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think for me, my philosophy in coaching has always been you have these certain ideas of what you want to run on offense and how you think you know, the game should be played, but then you have to adapt to the personnel that you have. Um, otherwise, you know, it doesn't, it's not going to work, right? Uh, so ultimately, I mean, coming back from the NBA, um, I learned a ton, you know, the spacing, the exciting um, kind of um, early offense options, not controlling every possession, essentially saying, here's the spacing and here's our actions in trans transition versus calling a set play every time and walking it up. And, you know, you, you, you can't do that unless you have players on the floor who are a threat in the spots that they're in, right? And so obviously Juju, I think, um, you know, really changed our ability, right, to play that way because she draws so much attention. Kenzie having playmaking opportunities, KP. Rhea has really embraced almost being what I would call like a vertical spacer. Like, g g like in the NBA, that's what they would call it. I was like, oh, we, you don't post up very much, right? Because they're, they're vertical spacers. They rim run, you know, and so you get – Jared Allen's arm to the rim, and you just lob it up there. Well, Rayo, we use her kind of similarly, right? Her gravity that she pulls to the rim without having to be standing there and taking up space. So, um, yeah, a lot of the the spacing and the action is probably mo more pro style than they ever have been before. Certainly, there are things that don't totally translate from the NBA, um, but but from a spacing standpoint and screening angles and um, where we can, you know, attack defenses. I try to pull that stuff in as, as much as I can. And then also specific to Juju, just like trying to find the spots to get her on the floor where she can not just be a scoring threat, but an assist threat, like where the, where are the doubles coming from and where can we exploit other things. And Kenzie, you know, very similar with that because of her skill set. Do we have any questions, last questions? Awesome, thanks so much, Coach. Thank you guys.
Welcome to the NCAA March Madness second round pregame press conference. Please take this time to silence your cell phones and remember no flash photography is permitted. We would also like to remind you that no outside recording or distribution is permitted by the NCAA for this event. We are joined by Kansas guards Samaya Nichols and Holly Kerskeeter. We ask that you please only ask a question when you have the microphone in your hand and that you state your name and publication. If you have joined us today through Zoom, please raise your hand and remember to state your name and publication as well when you are called on. Thank you, and we will start with questions from the room. Uh, Ethan Inman, Daily Trojan. Um, March Madness is really known for a lot of um, like really wild moments. It's what kind of makes it special. Um, and yesterday, you guys kind of experienced one with Zakiya Franklin hitting that wild three at the end of the um, at the end of regulation. Just kind of like take me through like how you guys were feeling in that moment and um, like how you're going to remember that for the rest of your lives. Uh, I think right when we called that play, I figured the shot was going to go to her. And I think my first thought was like, use your legs because <laughs> it was like the end of the fourth quarter and we were exhausted and we'd been fighting back for a really long time. And then just when I like saw that she got the bounce, um, I don't know. I mean, obviously we were just really happy. And then the fact that, you know, they called a timeout and we kind of got a moment to celebrate. Um, but I think just, like I said, like we never stopped fighting. I mean, w it took us the entire fourth quarter to make that comeback. So um, kind of the fact that it all culminated into that one moment was really special for our team and definitely for her, so. Mm -hmm. I have none of that. I know that. Obviously, the game went into overtime, but it just gave us the momentum to guard um, for that last 13 seconds and then just come out with the bang um, in overtime. Uh, ben Hook, University Daily Kansan. So, Holly, obviously you're a fifth-year senior. You're, you've had a lot of experience playing and playing with a lot of this core of players of you, Zakaya, Tiana. How do you think that that sort of experience of just playing together can be leveraged against a team like USC who haven't necessarily had that same amount of time of experience playing together? Uh, that's a good question. I think it's just having that trust in each other. Um, there wasn't one moment yesterday where we weren't on the same page um, throughout that entire sequence of being down and coming back and play by play by play by play. Um, you know, it's not like I needed to look at them and be like, are you guys okay? You know, we're still in this. I think we just knew um, and we just trust each other that, you know, we're all going to make plays. We're all going to be on the same page about different things. Um, so I think just having faith in each other and, you know, when times get tough, uh, it's difficult, but knowing that you're facing it together, and I know that, um, I mean, they're a young team, and they face adversity, but I I agree, like, adversity is different in this time of year, so it'll be great for them. I think they're going to enjoy it, and we're going to enjoy it, too, so, yeah. Stephen Davis, Jayhawk Radio Network. Samaya, for you, being a freshman, and the Big 12 was loaded with good freshmen this year. Obviously, USC has a star freshman. Just kind of talk about your freshman class within the conference and nationally. Did you know, seeing this group you played against in AAU, that this group had a chance to be a pretty special freshman class in college? Um, yeah, 100%. You know, um, I feel like there's a whole bunch of dogs, I feel like, especially in the freshman class because th that's what we're talking about, really, right? Mm -hmm. Just specifically on this. <laughs> um, but, yeah, 100%. Just playing um, AU against them, and it was never easy. You know, um, star freshman that we're about to play, uh, Juju. I played her in AU. Mm -hmm. wasn't easy as well. But um, 
I feel like they really, I feel like the freshmen this year really broke out, you know, um, proved their points, proved themselves, and uh, was a great addition to the teams that they're on. For both of you, obviously you've watched some USC film now. During the course of the season, did you guys ever catch USC on TV, get a chance to watch them at all until the last day or so? I think here and there throughout. Um, it's obviously easy to just, you know, catch highlights of people and see when things are going good for everyone. Um, I think the last kind of full game I watched was the Pac-12 championship against Stanford. Um, and yeah, USC won. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, obviously it was a high level game. Um, Pac-12 is competitive. So here and there throughout, you know, obviously we kind of know what they're about now and probably same thing for them. So it's going to be a tough team. They're fun to watch though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched the same game. She's talking about the championship game. Um, honestly, Pac-12 network is honestly hard to reach. Yeah. So just, yeah, honestly, <laughs> yeah, there's a barrier there. it's really hard <laughs> to reach. So um, it was here and there just seeing highlights or the championship game. You guys have some fans here. Obviously, it's at USC tomorrow night. You guys got to watch a little bit of the game yesterday and see the crowd. What do you make of the atmosphere, and how excited are you to play in, in front of this crowd tomorrow? Um, we're excited. We've played um, in front of many crowds, especially in our conference. And um, I guess we just need to make sure we come out with energy, um, with our own energy as well and just play for each other. Yeah, I think everything we do tomorrow has to come from within ourselves. Um, and even though we're gonna have a lot of fans and a lot of support, you know, as a team, we can't necessarily rel rely on that. We gotta be internally motivated and just know and not take into consideration that the crowd may or may not be a barrier. Um, uh, but that's okay. It's part of, like she said, we've been through it before. It's just part of the environment. Embrace it. It's part of it. It's a lot of fun. So we're grateful that everyone made the trip out and we're able to have the fans that we have. Do we have any last questions from the room? Um, women's basketball has obviously seen a real explosion in popularity this year and in recent and you know more recent years. Um, can you guys just like speak on what growing the game means to each of you? Uh, I will say, because I've been here a long time, um, from the moment I stepped on campus as a freshman to right now and just seeing where this game has been, whether I've been a part of it or not, um, playing in the tournament or not, uh, it's been huge. Um, and someone asked me the other day, you know, are you sad that you're leaving? and you know, now that the game is where it's at, you know, you don't get to be a part of it anymore. And honestly, no, because just knowing that, you know, I was a small, small part of it is kind of memorable and sentimental to me. And leaving it better than kind of where I found it was, was really important. So seeing it grow to where it has now, I think it's awesome. The fact that we put on ESPN tomorrow is crazy. Like, there'll probably be celebrities at the game. Like, that's crazy. So... Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no, yeah. Uh, as a freshman coming in, and it's, I think it's exciting for sure because it's just a start. You know, it just started honestly about two years ago where people started really noticing just women's sports in general. And um, just seeing where it's at right now and knowing that there is still so much future ahead when it comes to this women's in sports, basically. Um, I think it's exciting to see. Any last questions? Thank you. <laughs> Bowling ball. <laughs>
Welcome to the NCAA March Madness second round pregame press conference. Please take this time to silence your cell phones and remember no flash photography is permitted. We would also like to remind you that no outside recording or distribution is permitted by the NCAA. We are joined by Kansas head coach Brandon Schneider. We ask that you please only ask a question when you have the microphone in your hand and that you state your name and publication with each new question set. If you have joined us today through Zoom, please raise your hand and remember to state your name and publication when called on as well. Thank you, and we will start with an opening statement from Coach. Obviously uh, advanced in a pretty exciting style um, yesterday, um, and, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to uh, – playing one of the top teams in the country um, with, with some unbelievable talent. <clears throat> uh, Ethan and then Daily Trojan. Um, March Madness is kind of known for um, having exciting moments and you guys had um, a pretty unforgettable one yesterday with Zakiya Franklin's three-pointer bouncing around and then going into the basket uh, with little time remaining. Um, just kind of walk me through, uh, you know, the kind of general emotions of the team in that moment and um, how you'll kind of remember it. Well, I, I think uh, everyone remembers those moments differently. I know, you know, as a coach, I'm going to remember the execution of a play that we work on all the time and uh, not just the – the, the player who made the shot, uh, but the young freshman who made the pass and was willing to, um, you know, really bypass the first two options and, and wait on what was the best option. So, Obviously, sort of the elephant in the room when you're thinking about the matchup tomorrow is Juju Watkins. How, or sorry, my bad, Ben Hook, the University of Kansas. How do you prepare for a player like Juju Watkins? Well, I think um, no team ever won a big game running from a challenge. And uh, Juju's an a incredible player um, with a really, really versatile skill set. Um, and, and just like any other uh, opponent um, or, or preparation, um, we'll put together a scout and we'll do everything we can to be assignment correct and, and execute at a high level. Um, the trouble with great players is they make it very difficult to execute. Um, uh, but fortunately, I think for our team, is, is we've played um, some really good programs uh, throughout the year in the non-conference as well as the conference season um, who've also had uh, some really, really good players. When you look at sort of the similarities between Juju and Samaya in that they're both <coughs> highly touted recruits local to the program who came in and immediately made an impact in year one, how can you sort of, ta how can you sort of see that comparison on the court? You know, I was just thinking about this, and, and here's the comparison I see, um, is they're both surrounded by veterans. Um, you know, we were fortunate to have three fifth-year seniors um, stay with our program and, and um, you know, really be there to, uh, to bring Samaya into our program. And I think, you know, what Lindsay's done is, is brought in some, some transfers you know, with a lot of experience um, to, to aid in, in um, you know, Juju's transition into the college game. So those are some of the similarities I see. <clears throat> Stephen Davis, Jayhawk Radio Network. Brandon, piggybacking off the last question, two great freshmen in this game tomorrow night. There's great freshmen in the Big 12 and around the country. When you were recruiting over the last few years, did you kind of get the sense that this class as it was coming in would have this many impact players their first year in college? 
You know, Stephen, I've been a head coach now 26 years, and uh, I can't remember um, a freshman class um, that's that's playing at a level like this. I mean, you look uh, just in our conference, um, you know, we had to pick an all-freshman team, five players, and there were probably eight or nine that were deserving of making the team. Um, you know, every conference, I feel like um, – you know, you can immediately name an impact freshman. And uh, that's something that um, is has not happened a great deal in, in uh, my time uh, in, in collegiate women's basketball. Was it a surprise to you, especially with COVID fifth year players still coming in, still playing, that freshmen were able to come in and do this? To, what does that say to you about the talent level, maybe, of the group that came in this year? <coughs> well, I think. Um, you know, there's there's so many more opportunities for young people now in terms of development, not not just with their skills, but also with sports performance and strength and conditioning. Um, you know, for a freshman to come in and make an impact, not only does their skill set, you know, have to be ready, uh, but their confidence, you know, has to be um, elite. Uh, but then their bodies, you know, have to be ready. And uh, that's the thing I think that's really impressive is, there's so many young women who are coming into the game now that, you know, they're physically and mentally ready to compete and play at a high level. You've always talked about atmospheres and how a crowd really creates <coughs> energy for players. You were there yesterday for USC's game with the full house out there. What's it going to be like tomorrow night? How excited are you to coach and have your team play in, in that environment in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, again, we're fortunate, you know, in our league to play in some some terrific home court atmospheres, whether on the road or at home. Um, and the thing that we always talk about, you know, when we're playing um, in a tough environment on the road is um, there's a lot of energy created, but it doesn't have to belong to the home team. You know, um, we can take some of that energy um, and turn it into, uh, you know, use for for us as well. Coach, you've been around the uh, women's game a long time, um, and in the past few years, the game's really seen just such an explosion in popularity. Um, can you just talk about like what it means to you to see the game grow like like this in recent years? Yeah. Um, well, you know, my dad spent 46 years in women's basketball, um, so growing up around it, um, it's come a long, long way. And um, to to now um, be able to witness it firsthand and compete against uh, so many of these great coaches and players um, is uh, it's really special. And um, you know, I think uh, it's not going anywhere. When you think about, you know, arguably. Caitlin Clark right now is carrying the torch, right? Uh, but it's going to be a pretty seamless handoff to the next great player, you know, whether it's, it's probably Juju, you know. And, um, you know, hopefully there's uh, a young girl out there right now dreaming, you know, of being the next Caitlin Clark or the next Juju Watkins or, um, you know, the next Samaya Nichols or whatever. Um, I think that that's uh, – it's been cool to witness. Any last questions? Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you.